This right here is the Triumph Trident 660 Lems approved version. We're gonna go for a ride. I'm gonna take you down the freeway, I'm gonna take you through the city, I'm gonna ride really slow, I'm gonna ride pretty fast, do a zero to 100, 100 to zero. This is my Triumph Trident 660 review, Lems approved special. Let's go, let's go. G'day guys, welcome to Motorfields, I'm Rob Hamilton. Thank you so much for stopping by and checking out my review on the new Triumph Trident 660 Lambs Approved Special. That's right, it's Lambs Approved. This is the 54 horsepower version, not the standard 81 horsepower. It's more targeted to those who are going to start riding for the first time, are gonna take on the road, gonna buy themselves a motorbike and they want something solid as their first motorcycle. And to those who also want to maybe compare this to the 81 horsepower, what's the difference between the two? And also, if you're new to the channel, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. And hit the little bell notification icon so that you receive all the updates for when I release every video every Sunday, baby. Oh yeah. All right, before we get into it, we are going to go over to Nick from Triumph Sydney. Most of you guys know Nick. He's an absolute lord. He's gonna walk you over the bike just as you would if you were going to purchase one. And then we'll take it from there, man. What's going on guys, it's Mr. Triumph Australia here at beautiful Triumph Sydney on this nice sunny day. What I got for you is something special. The new Trident 660. We only got the Lambs version, unfortunately. Only Lambs, so what does that mean? We actually are restricted here on power, unlike all the other reviews, so that's what makes this review really special. Locked in at 54 horsepower and 58 pounds of torque. So all y'all haters saying that, oh man, I can't even ride it because it's not that cool, it's not that fast. This thing has a whole lot of punch. Racked up about, about 100 Ks on it already, and this thing takes a whole torque, uh, is not restricted, so you're blasting through all these gears. Brand new chassis, brand new everything. This is owed to the old Trident. The only thing that actually's come over from the Street Triple S platform is the motor. Everything else is redesigned. Brand new suspension, brand new wheels, brand new chassis, brand new TFT dash. You get on a bike that's lambs for 12 grand with a TFT dash, what? Yeah, whole lot of bang for your buck, and guys, Honestly, you don't need to be a Lambs rider to ride this bike. This bike is the ultimate commuter. I've had about 10 of these leave in the past two weeks. That's how popular they are. Really stunning, but also for the price, unreal. So, Trident features one of its first in class, a brand new TFT dash that Triumphs brought out. It gives you your essentials, and that's what I love about it. You get your neutral indicator, you get your riding modes, you got rain and road feature on there, a nice big tack, speedo, fuel gauge light, distance empty. You don't really need much more than that. I know a lot of people get super techy on it, but this is the bare bones and that's what this bike is. This bike features a lot of simple features that make the riding experience what we all want it and that's just riding. So it's not too complex, but it gives you everything to give you confidence and that's what the Triumph really is. So what this TFT dash allows us to add on is the boost to connectivity module. So a big thing is for when you're a Lambs rider, you're actually not allowed to have a quad lock or a handheld device mounted onto your, onto your handlebar here because it's illegal, but you actually have turn by turn direction Incoming calls, incoming SMS, music control, all features through that TFT dash. Comes at a small price, about well, $3.99, so not bad uh, for not breaking the law. How about that? Yeah, fire it up. Yeah, man, fire it up. Best part about the Trident comes in only at 12,690 featured in this sapphire black paint scheme. But this low entry point allows for us to make this Trident uniquely yours. So my personal favorites, bin these little mirrors off, go bar and mirrors. You can add on a quick shifter if you really want to get into that, you know, sporty feeling. And then other than that, man, don't need to do a tail tidy more because it has that beautiful exposed lighting. Do protection parts, you can do those factory frame sliders, paddock bobbin and the front fork protector. Call it a day. You're riding away like 13 and a half with a badass bike. This thing comes super kitted out. And honestly, it's just a fun bike for cheap money. So, you can't get much better than that, man. Keyboard warrior in the comments here. But hey, man, why can't we get the full license? Australia sucks. Hey, all right. So, I'm going to set it clear. I'm going to say it once and once for all. You cannot de-restrict the Trident in Australia and New Zealand. What I mean is that in Europe and most of the rest of the world, you can get an A2 license kit, which allows you to de-restrict the throttle, actually get the full 80 hertzpers um, once you fit past your A2 test. But unfortunately, we don't have that because Australia is lame. So literally like none in Australia. No, you can't do it. You can't, you can't do yeah, it. Right. Stop asking me, Rob. You can't do it. What about? No, you can't do it. I don't want to hear any scenario. Perfect. So they're actually not even releasing any. None are coming out of 84 horsepower. <laughs> none. Got to hop on this for the first time. Ah, easy to kick your leg over. Oh, this is nice. Feet are nice, flat on the ground. I'm five foot ten, by the way. 
feels very comfortable so far. Not leaning over too much. It's nice and light. Actually, feels feels light. Liam is everything. Everything's good. Feels nice. Feels nice. It feels like the backs up a little bit. Like you're nose diving a tiny bit. Mirrors nice and big. You can see plenty behind. Feels like a normal motorbike, guys. You're gonna be frothing if you're taking one of these up for the first time. Plenty of there's plenty of tank space. Hey, for your knees. It's nice, the tank's nice and wide, so you're gonna be gripping that, you're gonna be able to maneuver it around nicely. Everything feels nice and tidy, nice and where it should be. Good for a good starting bike. It stands easy to, you're not looking for it, you're not hunting for the stand either. On your first bike, you can't find the damn stand to put it down fast enough, but that flicks down beautifully. It's right there. Let's fire this thing up for the first time. Clutch is nice and light. It looks sick, man, this dash looks awesome. Standard triple sound. Standard triumph triple sound. Ooh. Ride by wire as well. Always feels a little bit funny. Just gotta get used to it. Woohoo! So smooth, man. It's like butter. These things are always like butter. Oh, there's some balls there, man. There is some balls. This was my very first time riding the Trident 660, so I had no idea what to expect. I literally just shared my experiences with you guys straight off the bat, speaking my mind. And one of the very first things I noticed going around my very first corner is that the handlebars literally. It really turns by itself. It's really bizarre, but it's it's not an off-putting thing. It's sort of an assisting thing. I felt as you're going around, the handlebars just wanted to turn a little bit. And it was just it was actually like just really nice and pleasant. You could almost don't do this. You could almost take your hands off, and it'll just turn by itself. And that's going at a slow speed. We'll get into it later. But the angling thing when going around corners, complete different situation, man. Which is sick. This bike already felt like it was a refined machine. Standard Triumph, man. Standard Triumph. The bike is quite light as well, coming at 186 kilograms, which means for the shorter people, for the shorter pe people out there that might be struggling with the bigger, higher bikes, or even just like normal bikes that might be a little bit too heavy, this is quite light. So you might be able to pull up a set of lights, and if you can't reach the floor, you'd be able to just let it lean a little bit. Having your foot on the rear brake, first gear, clutch in, left foot down, you can let it lean and just tip against you a little bit. You're not gonna, you're not gonna feel encumbered or anything like that. You're not gonna feel like it's gonna tip or anything. And then when the light goes green, when you're ready to move on, you can just sort of take off and just let the bike, it'll just kick up right and away you go. So it's, it's great for first time riders who are a bit nervous with bigger, heavier bikes. This doesn't feel that at all. It actually feels really small and nimble and light. The Triumph don't have any exhaust options yet, so the bike is quite quiet. There are three options with the self-canceling indicators. Have them completely off, so they're just manual, just normal operating. Hit left, it's gonna blink left. Hit right, it's gonna blink right. Hit in the middle, turns them off, just like a normal bike. Or you can have them up to the point where you can just tap them and then they just flash three times. Great for lane merging, great for city riding. You hold it for a bit longer and then they stay on for longer, turn around a corner and then they cancel. That's pretty cool for the new riders out there. Just something less to think about, especially if you're going through the city and everything, which I think this bike is amazing for, city riding, perfect. Really light, really nimble, you can merge, you can just smash that indicator, three blinks, boom, you're in the next lane. Big mirrors, check over your shoulder, pooh, man, you're just zipping around everywhere. Heading down the freeway, I guess the biggest thing here is that there is a lot of wind resistance against your chest. Other than that, there's no vibration, feels very smooth. It's a six speed, so it doesn't feel like it's revving out or maxing out. It feels pretty comfortable, pretty chilled. There is some engine braking there, so when you decelerate, it is just gonna slow down a little bit. But man, the torque in this bike is absolutely mind blowing. You can be in six gear, doing about 60, 70 Ks, open it up and psh, she goes up, baby. She goes up very fast which is plenty for a Lambs approved bike. And it's actually very impressive for the 54 horsepower version, especially when you need to get out of sticky situations. Sometimes you need to just power out, get yourself out of trouble. This thing will just up and go without even you needing to shift down, which is like, just damn crazy, man. That's so sick. I think that's such a cool thing. Yeah, now doing 70 if I boot it. Look at that. Torque is there all the time. Now being a triple, that standard triple Triumph feeling is very, very smooth on takeoff. It's just like, just like butter, baby. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And what I do like about the revs is that when you rev it up, it's sort of like a nice slow release and come down, which means that rev matching when you're changing gears is quite easy and it just feels really nice and smooth. What I noticed with the throttle as well, normally with the triples, they're pretty snappy. You just go vroom, vroom, vroom with this. It has that sort of like the nice lag for when it comes back down, which is a good thing in my opinion, 
so that when you're changing gears, it's not so jerky, especially being a new rider, if you're getting this as your first bike, you want it to sort of come down slowly. You want those revs to drop slowly, so it just gives you a nice chance to change into the next gear without it being dropping so low, so sudden, and then jerking into your next gear. So doing this, I'll give a nice example. Accelerating. See that, it just drops and you can match revs really nicely, very easily, which is a nice little bonus, especially if you're starting out riding. The gears are nice and short, like physically, so when you're changing gear, it's not like you've got a massive motion. It's nice and click, 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 next, next, next. It's really, it's really nice. It feels sporty, you know, and you can put that quick shifter in as well, as Nick mentioned, which would be even sportier. And I am a damn fan of the quick shifter, so if I had the option for mine, I'd totally do it, but you know, Lambs, we're talking about the L's people here, but it's a cool option to think about or consider in the future. Let's see how it goes, zero to 100 kilometers an hour. Good, here we go. Three, two, one. It's around five and a half seconds, zero to 100, which is pretty much on par with my 900 Scrambler. Are you kidding, man? This is a Lambs approved bike, guys, and it's pretty much putting the same horsepower output as mine. It's literally just the 900cc, that's the difference here between my Street Scrambler and the Trident 660. That blows my mind, man. That's crazy. Now 100 kilometers to zero kilometers, testing the braking out on this. There we go. Man, those brakes pull up. I'm impressed by those missings, man. That was about 32 meters-ish. Again, better than mine. Like, I don't know why mine don't have dual missings. Are you serious, man? Damn street scrambler. I reckon I got ripped off. Fuck, I got ripped off. I definitely got ripped off. I took this thing in the car park. I rode really slow with it, trying to see how it feels for you guys when you go and do your P's test or when you go and do your A2 test. Not sure what that really entails, but with the P's test here in Australia, you've got to do the most MLST. Forget what it stands for. But basically, you've got your start, stop, you've got your ride slow, and you've got your U-turn. The U-turn thing's like the biggest thing with most with most riders. Get pretty nervous about it. With this, now I, I damn had the GoPro on, and then I went to record, I thought it was off, and I hit it, stop recording, like I did that dumb thing. You can see, I had the handlebars full lock, man. Both feet up, and I was just going around, and it wasn't even that hard to do. Like, yes, I've done it a million times before, but I feel like if you're a newbie, this is just such a confident bike to start doing it on. With me, I had an SRV250 way back, carby, thing was coughing and everything, so as soon as you do something like that, it just sort of, you know, just jerks and you're just wobbling around everywhere. This was so smooth, man, just and you could just go very, very damn slow, which is incredible. Awesome control for slow riding, which is, that's always a plus. It was actually, that was actually mind blowing, man. That was, this thing handles, it's very controlled and just, you know, I took it for a blip through the twisties. I rode slow as if you were just taking your time, taking it easy. And um, sometimes with bikes, when you're going around corners slowly, it's actually harder to, to turn just because sometimes you need speed to be able to get down low and hook around them corners. But as I said, with this, as you're turning, if you're going not too fast, the handlebars just turn naturally for you. And it's, it's naturally, like it's a natural turning feeling. It's not like it's wigging you out, like you're gonna hit a wall or anything. It's just a nice relaxing motion, just, you know, comfortable, nice and comfortable for your first riding experience on the road. Nice and safe, nice and slow. But then if you do want to open it up, this thing does hook in. I ended up getting it over and I scraped a peg. That was by accident as well. I didn't realize that that corner turned so sharp. Oh, I scraped the peg a little bit. But I did get it right over. And they're the uh, Michelin Road 5s. There's a lot of contour at that tire. Got it down pretty damn low. I was actually worried that the bike would low side going that far down, but I had a look at the tire and there's still, it was pretty much right on the line at the rear. The front, there was like still half a centimeter maybe to go. So you do have a lot of lean angle facility there for you, which is cool. Again, first bike. What the heck? What the heck? This will last you above your P's and your L's. You get your unrestricted license. Take you to the stars, baby. Take you to the damn stars. <laughs> Seriously, Lado, you can hook this thing. You can hook it. The only thing I felt like the suspension was a little stiff going around some of those bumps. I think I hit a couple of rocks um, going around some corners and I made the back end kick out. 
scared the crap out of me. And it is a bit rigid, so as soon as you go around some of those bumps and you're going around the corner and you're just going pretty hard, you're gonna skip and you know, it's that's a bit, that was a bit nervy for me. The front shower forks aren't adjustable. Um, the rear just has a preload mono shock. Someone might make something down the line, some aftermarket suspension company, who knows what might happen. There's a lot of potential there. I just felt like it was just really stiff and really rigid for going, going pretty hard. And there were times like, if you're going on a rough country road, man, you're gonna be feeling it. But you can have some damn fun around them corners, man. Don't feel like you're gonna be trailing behind bikes or they're just gonna be ripping you just because you're on the lambs approved bike or anything like that. This thing hammers. The stiffness of the suspension also leads me on to the stiffness of the seat and the way the seat's designed. I don't really like it. Um, it's just it's just a smooth piece of material, so you can't really like anchor your butt down in there and get grip or anything like that. You're literally sliding all over the place. And the seat is quite large, which is cool, but as soon as you press yourself down to the back of it, as soon as you hit the mangas, man, and they're good brakes, you will just end up sliding forward all the time. You're sort of just sliding forward and back, which is not, it's not ideal. Again, maybe, hopefully, there'll be some aftermarket six seats that come out. Pillion's quite large, I reckon you'd be pretty comfortable there. Maybe. <laughs> Suspension's pretty stiff. Uh, but again, maybe everything just needs to be broken in, you know what I mean? It's a pretty new bike. Maybe the foam just needs to be broken in a little bit. Uh, my butt was sore at the end of the trip. It was about a three hour all round trip though, so there is that to consider. Shape of it, which comes up as like a little sharp edgy part where I felt like my, you know, my butt cheeks, half of them were hanging off each side. I didn't really feel heaps comfortable the entire time. And also the indicator just wasn't in a nice spot for me. I always had to sort of like bring my thumb around and click them where everything else felt like I was in a good spot, but indicators, you use them the most. So I always had to like lift my hand off the handlebar to be able to reach the indicator selector. I did notice that there is like, and I feel like this happens through all triumphs, but there is just that vibration through the handlebars when you're hitting about 4,000 revs and on. You feel like just a bit of a shudder through the thing. It's a standard triumph thing that I swear, because it even happens to mine, but I'm not sure if it's the camshaft or anything like that. I don't know, I don't know. It is there though, even when you just go to open it up, you're just gonna feel that through the front. Not sure if it's a big deal breaker or anything like that, just thought I'd let you know. And the front wheel does come up. When I did the launch, saw it, zero to 100, I, just, I was leaning forward as well, and that was, that was coming up a few times. I was just trying to keep that thing down. So, holy crap, be careful guys, be careful. If you open that up and drop the clutch, it's just gonna loop, you're gonna loop it, and it's gonna be a hectic time, or a fun time. <laughs> just, you know, just be careful, take it easy, please. And overall, yeah, I think this is a great bike for a first time rider. I think it's actually better than the Speed Triple S660. Reasons is that you just, I feel like you're in more control. It's not, you're not, you're not leaning over more and you don't feel like you want to race all the time. You're sort of just like in a nice, comfortable position. If anything goes wrong, boom, your foot can just drop out really easy. The pegs aren't far back, they're very neutral. You have a lot of control, man. Like I said, I was riding so slow, it's just creeping. And there's a lot of control there. You feel very confident in riding on the roads. You won't be too scared or anything like that. Yeah, that's my that's my general honest thoughts on the Triumph Trident 660 Lambs approved version. Fantastic bike, man. Fantastic bike if this is one that you actually want to start learning on. $12,690. If that's in your budget, then damn, get this bike, man. You'll be stoked. You have traction control, you have ABS, you have your two riding modes, road and wet or rain. Where rain, it just kills half the power, which is perfect. It's exactly what you want, so you're just not gonna be kicking out that rear wheel all the time. All in all though, amazing bike. Go to your Triumph dealer today. I'm not sponsored, this video is not sponsored. I'm just saying it out of the kindness of my own heart and the knowledge that I have after riding this thing. Go and take it out for a spin, man. You'll be damn stoked, hey. Well, you probably can't because you'll be on your L's get a friend to, <laughs> that will be stoked. Yeah, is that it? I feel like I just blasted through all that. It's always that, it's always that feeling, man. I always, I always feel like I blast through it. Once again, if you have any questions, drop me a line and I'll, I'll answer them. I'll answer them. I always try to answer your questions. Damn it, I always try. You can't, you know, you can't say I don't, I do. Thanks so much guys, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for subscribing and supporting the boys. I hope you like this video and I'll see you guys all in next week's vid. Oh, it's a giveaway next week as well. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Peace. Do I have anything to show you guys? Uh, oh, yeah. I've got a Cardo system now. Check this out. You might hear some music playing in the background of the, you know, of the of the vlog or whatever. That's because the Cardo system is playing music through my thing. Man, this, this is sick. I might do a review on that later. The wind noise through my helmet, though, was ridiculous. Look, it just...
I don't know if you can see that. See that? That popped open. Heaps of wind got to the mic. That's why I'm doing it this way because the mic, it's just unusable and I hate wind. I hate too much wind noise going through my stuff. So, um, you know, I think this works out better anyway. I like it. <laughs>